Welcome back to the Gun Collective. My name is John Patton. Boys and girls, we're out here today again for an episode of The Proving Ground. This time, we're out here looking at rimfire competition rifles. Now, those of you that have been following along have known that Ben and I have been progressing and we're trying to do more fun things with rifles. And what that means is we've jumped into the Mid-Atlantic Rimfire Series or MARS here on the East Coast. And I've got a brand new rifle that we're out here trying to find the correct ammunition for. We've got stuff from SK, we've got stuff from Federal, CCI, and two different kinds from Norma. We're going to test these at 50 and 100 and maybe stretch it out a little bit longer if we have time today. The rifle itself is one that I've got from House of Arms. They're good friends of mine out in Colorado. This is a Thompson Center TCR22 action, which you guys know that I actually like. It's similar to a 1022, but up top, it's got a Keystone Arms 20-inch fluted barrel. Out front, the bow USS 22, the Keystone stock, and a Calvin Elite Timney trigger here. Guys, I don't know exactly how this is going to shoot, but in preliminary testing, getting this zeroed at 50 yards, the CCI standard velocity is grouping one hole. So, if that is any indication, this is going to be a fun test. Let's get to it. We'll see you in a minute. Coltac is no longer just making suppressor wraps and pouches. They're jumping headfirst into the precision rifle game with products like the Cuddle Bag, the Boss Bag, the Ammo Book, and the Rifle Handle. You pick the colors, they build the gear. And because you're awesome and you watch TGC, they're doing a special discount code for you. TGC 10 will get 10% off your entire order over at coltac.com. First up in our test here, we are gonna rock some of the CCI standard velocity. Reason for that is that these are not coated projectiles and we want to make sure that we shoot all of these, all of our groups with these before we move over to the wax coated projectiles. And uh, from there, we're gonna go to the SK ammo, then the Federal match, and then we're gonna jump into the Norma bullets. Here we go, two rounds at 50 yards, I'm up. Man, that's solid. All right, where should I move to? Yeah, that first one was... Uh, first one was a little bit off there. Yeah, but the all last four you know what, I'm just gonna hold that bottom point on that diamond, of the, the black diamond there. Yeah, just keep them all together. So they yeah, might as well. Let's keep moving. Man, that thing's quiet. Outstanding. Good first group. That's pretty good. That's I mean, pretty that's, damn that's good. It's pretty good for CCI stuff. Moving on to the SK ammo. We did note that this stuff is a little bit greasy. There's like this almost machine oil on the casings, not just the bullet, but also on the casings, which is interesting. This is designed to run semi auto which is why we're particularly interested in seeing how it does in this. I've heard really good things about SK. We'll see how we group with it today. I'm gonna put 10 rounds. We go. So I'm noticing with this stock that I'm I'm having trouble getting a consistent place. Mm -hmm. uh, ben was talking about adding some sort of like grip tape 
or uh, some place that you can consistently find with your face when you come down on the stock, the grip, and even something up here for traction because this is pretty slick. It's nice and smooth, it looks great, but uh, as far as practicality, it might be good to add something. We'll see. Wow, that is really disappointing. Yeah, that stuff's uh, out of the running as far as I'm concerned. All right, so we're continuing on. We've got the Federal Gold Medal match. Not sure how this is gonna group, but we are gonna try it again. It's a wax coated projectile and uh, we'll see. That's more like it, Ben. There you go. That's a good group. Yep. That's a good group. I'm, I'm pleased yep. with that. <laughs> that was outstanding. Dude. That was outstanding. <laughs> I'm gonna put that in the video. That's my good ear. <laughs> That's my good ear. <laughs> So we're continuing on. This time we're trying out the TAC-22 from Norma. Not really sure how it's going to do. It's designed for semi-autos and if it's anything like the SK it may not do well but we shall see. We're going to try it out here. That was weird. That was weird. That's really weird. So we just had a group of two going and then it split off way bad and two there and then another one back in the so whatever whatever yeah what is going on so we're seeing some anomalies here hopefully ben can uh get this either to settle out or see the same anomalies across because wow that's weird all right go ahead <laughs> i don't know if i talked about this in any other videos but um so one of the big things with 22s this rim thickness is actually what sets headspace so if you have one that's thicker or thinner, that's gonna throw off your, your point of impact. That's why when you get into the higher... Like the match stuff. The match stuff, like Ely, like like the 10X, I think we have a box over here, that, all that stuff's measured. They measure everything at the factory, either a caliper or however they do it, but all those are, are the same So they're the grouped board. into lots yep. so that they shoot the same across yep. certain lots. Top left target, or top right target, bottom right center. Yep, those the last five went in the same hole. So it's settling, or is that what you're saying? <clears throat> yep. So it's uh, it could be, it could be the uh, the coating that's on there. It needs twenty some rounds that to, for that coating to settle in. Okay. And actually coat the coat the board. Those last five are all touching like a clover leaf. So what we were noticing with this TAC-22 is that my first group had some really strange anomalies. We get two rounds here, two rounds here, and then back in the center group. And then it's uh, it was only one round the next group. And then as Ben shot his groups, it slowly, progressively seemed to start settling in. And what we're thinking is the coating on these projectiles and cases is starting to kind of season the barrel and, and chamber and whatnot. And the gun is now settling with this ammo. So what we're going to do is go ahead and shoot two more groups each with this TAC-22 to see if it is consistent now. Uh, let's do it. Got to be honest, I'm not happy with this stuff. Let's see what you can do this time. I think so far the Federal is the best stuff. Yeah, so the far. Federal is out front right now. Next up, guys, is going to be this Norma match stuff. We have some high expectations being that this is match ammo. We'll see how it stacks up against the federal match ammo, and uh, which is currently in the lead. So here we go. Yeah, that's 
Not super impressed with that. Let's see how Ben does. Okay, so now what we are going to do is move on to our 100 yard targets and see what is performing the best at that range. We're gonna start with the CCI standard velocity because shockingly, this was one of the top three ammunitions out of this gun at 50. So we're gonna start with these. Now, keep in mind, we've been shooting a lot of coated bullets in this barrel, so we may see some different performance than we saw initially, but we're gonna give it a shot. Then we're gonna move on to the Federal, which we believe has performed the best. And then we are going to move on to the Norma ammunition, the Norma match ammunition. Long story short, let's rock and roll. How do you think, Ben? Center of the big target. Well, I've got a couple groups there. It's Ben's turn. All right, so here we go, 100 yards. Now with the Federal Gold Medal match, we're gonna see how that stacks up. Not nearly as good. Let's see how you do. Okay, let's uh, move on and check the Norma and see how that does. Here we go, moving on to the Norma match stuff at 100 yards. We're gonna see how it performs. Federal gold medal. Federal gold medal match is gonna be the ticket. Yep. All right, so we talked a little bit about John's rifle that, that he's shooting, and uh, this is what I'll be shooting for this year. John actually got me the action, it's a Brownells uh, what is it? Their standard, the BRN 22. The, it's their BRN 22 action. I put a 20 inch kid barrel. I'm shooting a Tactical Solutions Sparrow, a BX trigger that has some kid parts in it, springs and whatnot. Uh, I, this is a chassis from a company in California for a 1022. I took one of our handguards. I work for Lancer, so I took one of our handguards and kind of mounted it on there. Uh, put adjustable buttstock on here. And I'm running a 3x15 night force with the guys in there. Uh, just trying to make it so it's pretty much an AR. It's got some good weight to it, too. I'm running a dual magazine, a 20 round magazine. Um, and you're favoring the Ely Force. You said you were yep, yeah, I'm running shooting Ely really force. good with that. Ely Force is what this gun likes. I've tried a bunch of different ammo, and the Ely Force really runs real well. Especially when these 1022s get dirty, they need a little bit more oomph uh, to keep them running. So that stuff definitely has more oomph to it. It's still subsonic, it's right around 1080. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm shooting. Uh, maybe change to a different stock in the near future, I'm not sure yet. Uh, but for now, this is what I'm running. All right, so here we are at 50 yards. Started out with the CCI standard velocity. Yep. Surprising results considering the value proposition on that ammo. You shot really well with it. I shot pretty dang good with it. I would say this is under an inch. We're gonna measure these and put them up on screen for you. And then we went to the SK ammo over here, right? Yep. Is it, that, that's the order, this, this. And that uh, was not as impressive. Uh, kind of lackluster as far as I'm concerned. Any thoughts there? Yeah, same thing. Um, I mean, yeah, inch and, inch and whatever, yeah. Okay, so then we moved into, this was our first groups with the federal gold medal match. Yep. And I'm telling you guys, that stuff, I mean, compared to this, this this makes this looks great, right? Uh, I'm, I'm really pleased with the federal in this case. And then we moved, yeah, you, you shot. <laughs> I mean, that's outstanding. We're gonna, again, we'll measure these. That's really good. But again, guys, we're at 50 yards. We kind of expect stuff to do really well. So we, we kept it moving. And this was the Norma TAC 22. Mm -hmm. That's meant for your kind of AR-22s and things like that. And it did okay, but we were seeing some anomalies where I put two here, then it would put two here, one back here, a couple up here, then one here. It was kind of bouncing around. And as we progressed, so I shot these two groups, and then Ben shot these two groups, and we had noticed that, was... that it kind of started to settle. So what we did was shoot uh, a couple more groups, which... Uh, you know, really, we were trying to find out, is this stuff settling? Do we have an answer with this? So here and here, uh, kind of underwhelming performance there. And then we moved on to the match here and here. 
here and here. And again, not, not to, to amazing stuff, but not horrible either. So what we did was take our top three, which we felt was the CCI standard velocity, the federal gold medal match, and the uh, Norma match. And we took that out to 100 yards. Let's go over there. All right, so here we are, 100 yards. The ideal goal here is about one MOA or an inch group. That's going to be a solid performing rifle for us out of a 22. And uh, I don't know that we really, really settled into that like we wanted to, but we'll go over the groups. Uh, this is really all about trying to find what works in the rifle, not what works best as a whole. So here we go. So we had the CCI standard velocity. I shot a five shot group there, a five shot group there. Not great. Uh, ben also same, better. Uh, but he also had this kind of stringy. So inconsistent performance from the CCI standard velocity. For the price point and what that's meant for, I'm not like underwhelmed. It shot pretty good that's at 50. That's actually not, not bad like, for what... Yeah, you know, okay, we'll take that. That's a, that's a very cheap, affordable ammo, and uh, that would do well with varmint control and things of that nature. So then we moved on to the top contender of the 50-yard test, which was the Federal Gold Medal Match. And I'm telling you, this is a solid group. This is definitely something that I can get going on. Not as good here, but I'm still okay with the performance consistency-wise because when you're shooting a match, you need to know that where you're going to shoot is at least kind of close to where it's going to hit. And, and that's, that's an inch. Yeah, that's definitely an that's inch. Close. This is a little bit over, probably an inch and a half. Inch and a half. But uh, then you shot a couple, and you had a couple low flyers. Do you want to yeah, explain calling, what was happening here? I'm going to call these two. So that trigger that's on your gun... Um, yeah, we were having some issues I with have, the reset. I have probably going to call them and see what's going on. Yeah, I have an issue with how that stages. So what I was actually doing is I was pre-staging the trigger, and as I was coming up on here, I would take my breath and I would pull it. So when I was coming up here, I let one go here. So you're you were letting them go yeah. a little bit early. Yeah. So there's something with that trigger that I couldn't, I can't get. When I'm squeezing, it, it, the crosshairs move a little bit. So I was trying to pre-stage it a little bit, but. Yeah, we're going to have to call yeah. Timney and see, gonna... see what's going on there, see if it's an issue with the trigger, if that's just how they are. I'm not positive. Uh, I'm not an expert on Timney triggers. However, so removing your two low flyers, you had some really solid performance there. Four shots here and four shots there. This federal gold medal stuff, pretty dang solid. I mean, that's, that's, um, that's a well under an inch. Yeah. Try not to sink into the mud. And I shot a 10 shot group. Ben shot, I believe, a 10 or a 9 shot group. Not exactly sure because we started running low on so ammo. Is, that's my 10, and then this is your 10. So my 10, obviously, uh, you can see who's the better shot here between Ben and I. Shocker of all shockers. But this kind of performance across 10 rounds is, I mean, that's, that's easy, a 4 inch group in total. And I am not impressed with that Norma match stuff out of that rifle. Ben, uh, you know, similar in that this is probably a two and a half to yeah. ish group. It's, it's, you know, we'll put it on screen, but good Lord, uh, not great out of that. So what did you think overall? Yeah, I just think, I think maybe you're gonna have to look up what chamber that has in it. Cause I, I think it likes, they have different chambers. Like there's a sportsman's chamber and then there's a Ben's chamber, which is in my kid. Um, the kid barrel likes a little bit of the Ely stuff better. Uh -huh. So maybe you have a little bit looser barrel uh, chamber. Sure. So that's why you're the... And the, the, and the price point on, yeah. on your barrel versus the barrel that's on my rifle, two very different things. Yeah. But I think we, we have found something. We may revisit this in the future, but I'm, I'm telling you that that federal gold medal match is going to be the ticket for me. I'm, I'm impressed with how it grouped today. And uh, I guess that's it. I, I'm pumped that Ben and I are gonna have some chances to shoot some Mars matches this year. If you guys are in the kind of Maryland, Ohio, Jersey, Delaware, PA area, kind of in this area, you definitely need to check out the Mid-Atlantic Rimfire Series. We're excited about it. It's only about 120 rounds a day, so you need three boxes of ammo. Yeah, and it's, I think, 30 bucks to yeah, shoot. Yeah, 30 bucks to shoot. Really, really simple. Yeah. So you can, yeah. you know, bring any kind of rifle out there and have fun. Yeah, it's not, Everybody's super helpful. Nothing hard. I mean, I think the farthest we shoot is 300 yards, which is only at one club. All right. the rest is 200 yards, and the targets are huge at 200 and 300 yards. Yeah, yeah, they're g gigantic. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just pretty much for fun, like a fun position. Shoot a lot of positional stuff. Um, like, 
one of the courses of fire last week at the match was you shot eggs at 25 yards or little egg targets. Yeah, the, just, the metal you, eggs. Yeah, yeah, you just hose them down at 25 yards. And, That's fun. Yeah. And you shoot everything like there's there's that kind of stuff, and then there's the more precision stuff, yep. the know your limit rack, which I thought was a complete riot. Watching guys like really try and push themselves and then drop the ball entirely. That's fun, especially yep. the guys that are way into uh, PRS and three gun and all that kind of stuff, and watching them fall flat on their faces. That's entertaining for all of us. Uh, anyway, definitely uh, Google them, Mid Atlantic Rimfire Series. I'm not sure exactly what their website is, but they're cool. We like those guys over there, so de check them out. We are going to be shooting more of that. Yep. this year and uh, I guess that's gonna be it for the House of Arms rifle yeah I'm pretty pleased that it's shooting the federal stuff and that is it guys as always be sure to check out our sponsor Cold Tack and be sure to leave us a comment and let you know what you think about the video we'll see you soon thanks for watching